Greetings, everyone! It is I, Kikoskia, welcoming you to a stream. The pre-stream, to be exact, where you have the opportunity to get here, get comfortable, and get ready for the formation of a new space empire. For this is Stellaris, a game made by Paradox where you're an empire in space, and you do space things, and anomalies happen, and the situation is updated, and technology is researched. Hello, Ada! Hello, Nebula! Hello, Saberus! Hello, Hammy! See what up stars and shooter aliens and maybe... We, we may engage in those things. What's all this then? It, it, it's Stellaris! Those that are here now get to watch as we create a species. And go into this, if you know Stellaris, um, with the fact that this is going to be a very casual and very light and... Uh, not optimal playthrough, and I'm going to be reading the anomalies, and I'm going to be engaging in the fluff, and hey, old dragon's here right now, hey! You bringeth the ham! I am sorry, the, the, the empire I'm making is not about ham. Space mushrooms incoming, ho ho! We'll see about that. So, I'll also be trying my best to explain the rules about, um the game as best I can, I will fail miserably. So, welcome to the Empire Creation screen. Uh, here are all the DLCs I have. I have all of them. I, I have all of them. And here are the three people that I have already made. You have the Communion of Forever with the Sarantos, who typically end up going psychic. Lost Colony, much the chagrin of everyone that I play uh, multiplayer with because they end up facing Sarantos, who turn out to be horrible. Then you have the ones I've created the most recently, the uh, the XVG Remnant, who are a bunch of hive mind machines. And then you have the one that I'm having the most fun playing right now, which is the Brikiki Z. But we're not playing any of those. We're going to be making a new empire. And I will talk you through it step by step. Hello, Darkstorm Seeker. Hello, everyone. And I'll be explaining all of my logic. So, there's a list of things here. We start from scratch and we work all the way through. It defaults you on humanoid human. Uh, we're not going humanoid human. Nope. This is where we acquire space, hopefully. Hello, Tack. Oh, hey, thanks, Twitch. Let me know because it was wild. I didn't know. I know, right? It's a good thing it was helpful. Right, so, um, Lithoid. There are many different people. There's humanoids. There's machines. There's mammalian. Reptilian. Avian. Anthropoid. Molluscoid. Hello, Cav. He's here. One space, please. Get in line. Lots of people want space. Here's Dolores. Hello, Richard. Fungoid is there. With my Nivlak. Greatest people ever. Lantoid. Necroid. Aquatic. We're being Lithoid. Any Alloids? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, there are. You've got, like, these people. And these people. But we're going Lithoid. First choice. Lithoid. There are, indeed. There are many different, uh, hello, Retu. There are many different things you can be with Lithoid. Hello, Reggie. You've got these rock people. You've got these rock people that look like they have a furnace for a mouth. We have these rock people that almost look like bugs. These people that have a sideways mouth. These ones that sort of look root-like. Gem ones. Fungoid ones. Bug ones. These ones here. These ones here. So many! Hey, Mr. One. Hey, Derpy. We're going with these people. Don't these people look friendly? Don't they look friendly? If you saw that, that alien, you'd want to be its friend, right? Yeah? No? Well, too bad. That's who we're being. So, that's who we are. But what is our race name? What is the, 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 the name of our species? Folks, 
What do you think it's going to be? I just want, I want a moment here. What do you think the species is going to be named? Wow, someone got it immediately. Someone got it immediately. Well done. And there's Quickmind with a rate of nine. Thank you, Quickmind, and welcome! Welcome to the beginning of creating this empire in a casual playthrough of Stellaris where I'm gonna read all the logs and take things slow and steady and try and explain what I'm doing. Hello! So, um... I hope your, um, hope your stream went well, um, Quickmind. We're gonna be... The Junevan! Objective! Junevan! Plural. Jun. Va. By the way, yeah, go check out Quickmind. UFO Aftershock. Ooh, fun game. I hope you enjoyed it. I see I'm detecting a pattern here. <sighs> biography. Oh, there's a biography. That's with a wonderful joy of paste. I wrote a biography for the Junevan. The Junevan do not know how it is they came to be, but even in their earliest days in the deep subterranean caverns that were their home, they knew they were meant to be. Their coming was to be, uh, the coming to be was no accident, but preordained by divine destiny. The dominion of their world was absolute, but their underground realm was all they knew for so long. Then a preacher stumbled across a cavern that led to the surface, and suddenly, their world became much, much bigger. That other entities were out there in the galaxy are irrele is irrelevant, for their worlds belong to the Junevan, as all things do. That is the biography of our people, and you'll see from that that there's a number of things that are going to follow on. So, names. Uh, names, we are going with Lithoid 2. And we are going to, um, the ship prefix is, uh, JB, for Junevan. They seem very friendly. Do they? Do they seem friendly? Let's find out. So, traits. We get two trait points. Mayhem, yippee! And those there just subscribed 25 months 25 months is amazing. Hey, Kiko, good to see you. Is this the stuff from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Then this sounds really interesting. Nope, this is Stellaris. This is Stellaris. <laughs> Are we the baddies? Yes, always. Thought this smelled us. Who forgot to. Oh, no, companion. Right. We get one trait here Lithoid. This species has a silicon based biology and consumes minerals rather than food. They are tougher than traditional organics and have slow metabolisms, making them, uh. making them long lived but slower to reproduce. They eat minerals and not food. There is a name pool. Uh, it'll be used for, um... Hello, Squashy Lemon. Um, it'll be used for, um, various leaders of things. We are not doing anything just yet with that. Uh, population growth speed, lower. Pop assembly speed, lower. Habitability, higher. Army health, higher. Leadership lifespan, a lot. It's without reservation, so you can't reserve. Um, but... We're missing a trait here, and for that we have to go to our origin. There are many different origins. I'm not going to go through all of them here. I'm going to pick the one that we're going to have. <laughs> Subterranean, for the awesome background. No, not science and construction ships, uh, just the people. Whether avoiding predators or seeking easier access to resources, this species has evolved to live under the surface of their homeworld, leading to a more environmentally versatile society. Start with the cave dweller trait. My, like species constructs the leaks the season of ground into a 10% increase in building and district costs and minus 10% build speed, suffers minus 75% damage from orbital bombardment. Mining districts are uncapped at two building houses, and every three mining districts grants a building slot. We're going to be doing a lot of building. So, back to traits. We have the Cave Dweller trait now. Uh, we also have... This... There are many perks, many flaws. Man. I'm not going to go through them all right now. And there's Tizzle Alley there with 21 months. 
and Zed Striker there with 10 months. Thank you so very much, Tizzlady there. Thanks to him, months of good, wholesome uh, company. Glad to help. Glad to entertain. Mayhem. Yippee. Seems like a good one for a race. Oh, I hope so. Juman is subterranean. <laughs> oh, this is this is not canon to Wildermyth, so I wouldn't take that as anything special there. Right. Traits. I'm not going to go through all of them. It would literally take me forever. The one that's important for us is sedentary. This species has a sedentary past, and its members are reluctant to migrate away from where they grew up. Minus 15% population growth from immigration, and plus 25% resettlement cost. Yippee! And there is a silency there with 22 months. Thank you so very much. That's so kind of you. Thank you. We already have 61 people already. This is absurd. 61 people already. <sighs> Welcome, all of you. Hopefully this won't go terribly wrong. To counteract Mayhem. this, Yippee. and there's Animex there gifting us up. Thank you so very much. Thank you. You're not breaking me yet, but uh, I'm grateful for all of your uh, kindness. Hello, Ziggy Zaff. Uh, we are industrious. Where is industrious? There it is. Members of this species are known for their diligent and hardworking nature, always going above and beyond. Plus 15% minerals from jobs. This is important because it's our food. And what we use to build things. And then traditional. Certain aspects of this species. Ooh, a pouch of gold. Rock, he go rocks. He doesn't break easily. Thank you so very much, Kev. Also, you just started a hype train. That is so awesome of you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Oh, that's neat. Thank you. Plus 10% unity from jobs. We have two trait picks left, but no more trait points. So uh, that's our traits done. Yay! We're done. Homeworld is going to be a desert world. Dry, rocky world with a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere. Precipitation and major body water, surface water are relatively rare. Significant temperature variations between day and night cycles. Vegetation is scarce, Ooh, but even moderate precipitation can make the desert bloom. Hi! Thank you so very much, Alias. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Uh, name of the planet. You don't get to pick this. I get to pick it. Uh, so, the planet is called Dune. Dune. Get it? Get it? There's a joke! There's a double joke here! And the sun is Ven. June Ven. They're original. Eh, see? I did it. No, we're mining minerals. So, city appearances. Doesn't matter, because uh, they're all underground. They're all underground, but uh, I'll pick that anyway. Doesn't matter, as I say. Ooh, all of us is out of go. Choo choo! Thank you very much, Ziggy Zaf. You must buy additional minerals. I I'm gonna, trust me. This is probably gonna, like, die or anything. We've already picked the origin. <laughs> Government and es ethics. Right. This is important. Uh, so, we have three ethics points. And we have to pick three. You can't just pick two. So, uh, what do you think we're gonna go with? There is the middle one, which is Gestalt Consciousness, where we're all hive minds. Spoiler alert, we're not going for that one. Hello, uh, Inuudim. Uh, this is egalitarian, and this is authoritarian, to opposite. You can't be egalitarian and authoritarian. Here is pacifist and militarist. You can't be both. Here is materialist and spiritualist. And xenophobe and xenophile. And five subs there. Thank you so very much. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, in this game, they work against each other, Thrithland. It, it, it makes mechanical sense that you can't. Like, spiritualists can still use technology, but it's much deeper than just using technology. Xenophile and pacifist, of course, with that background. So, um... We're going fanatically authoritarian. We are fanatically authoritarian. A single voice, a single throne, a single state. It is the solemn duty of the masses to obey those enlightened few who have been charged with the great responsibility of leadership. Uh, 
and spiritualist. There are those who think it behooves us to remember how tiny we are, how pointless our lives are in this vast and caring universe. What nonsense! The only truth we can ever know is that our own existence, the universe in all its apparent glory, is but a dream we all happen to share. So we gain more unity, edicts cost less to upkeep, and less cost. We gain more influence, which I'll explain, and our population works harder. Guess what kinds of government we can have? Dictators or Imperial? <laughs> Hello, DJ Birdman. No, we are not. We're gonna have an Imperial. One, upon ruler death, the designated successor becomes a new ruler. Imperial governments are similar to dictatorial ones, except the throne is always inherited by a designated successor. <laughs> A pouch of and space! Thank you very much, Mr. Megaharsi. Thank you. That's so kind of you. So we have two civics, which represent our empire. There's a long list of them. I'm not going to go through all of them for you, because it's a long list. Uh, there are two that are important here. Will there be name raffles? Yes. Maybe add in high Ooh, efficiency then? A pouch of nope. gold! I'll tell you what we're adding. And that's 100 bits from Tiny Dream. I've never played this game, but I've seen it streamed before. Space vampires? We're not being space vampires. We're not being space vampires. <laughs> and there's Colin C there with two months Prime Gaming. Thank you so very much. Hello! How goes it? Remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime. Do you have a Prime sub? You can spend on whoever you want. Even me, if you like! <laughs> Imperial cult maps? Well, give Ooh, me a moment for a people to stop giving bits for remotes. I can talk. <laughs> Derby with a hundred there, thank you so very much. So the first thing we're going for is uh, Masterful Crafters. Nope, not doing that, Cerberus. A perchant for meticulous crafting lies at the heart of this society. Deft appendages and keen sentry organs aid them in crafting truly wondrous treasures even in the most basic of trades. Artisans are replaced with artificers. They produce consumer goods as well as trade and engineering research. <laughs> And the Imperial Cult! This society has a dominant state religion where the ruler is worshipped as a living deity. Plus 100 Edict Fund. We are a divine empire. This government is a form of spiritualistic autocracy. Everything is shaped by the official state religion, and the ruler is worshipped as an infallible living god. And there's Thrithlin with eight subs! That's 312 you've gifted so far! Thank you so very much! That is so kind of you! Thank you! Truly that is kind! We're not gonna get through the race creation in 20 minutes. Also HYPE! Thank you so very much. So that's what we're picking. I'm not picking a race to be powerful, I'm picking a race because it fits a theme. <laughs> Advisor voice! There are tons of them, I'm not gonna go through them all. I'll merely point out that the original one will sound familiar to some people. Priority alert. Please disregard the contents of my previous message. That will probably sound quite familiar, but we're going to be picking the Lithoid one. Geodes, rocks, mountainsides, lend me your ears. Because rocks! Rubble it in, why don't you? Geodes, rocks, mountainsides... Now, the name. You're going to hate this as well, Cirrus. Get it? Because we're rocks! The Junevan Formation! Rock Formation! Ha! Thank you very much, Switzerland. Also, adjective is Junevan. And there's Dave subscribing 11 months. Thank you so very much. That's so kind of you. Press has become the crisis. You can't! Single player game. Okay, the flag. I've even done the flag. So long, Thrithland. So the flag is Lithoid. Row two, number two. Uh, the, col the primary color is dark brown. The secondary color is dark gray. And the background is six from the bottom. One, two, three, four. And we're left. <laughs> that is our flag. <sighs> Would a human colony be called a sediment? Probably. Right, ship appearances. Obvious? Lithoid. Because we're rocks. I mean, I thought that'd be pretty straightforward. Finally, the ruler. 
mail. The title for them is Carnelian, and the air. Uh, you can't customize the city appearance. It's subterranean, Cav. Like, it automatically defaults to subterranean. <laughs> like, I can pick whatever I like for the city appearance, and it'll just default to subterranean. Right, color variation. Um, gonna go with number four here. And you're gonna hate the name. First ruler of the Juven formation is Gavrock. There you go. Race created, empire created. It's gonna go horribly wrong. Oh, uh, we have nothing to worry about. Then we have everything to worry about. Save. Nope. Because. That's his name, Gavrock. I'm very, very proud of the Rotar. I think it might ma it might matter if you did settle a race that's not Junevan. Uh, you think I'm gonna settle races that aren't Junevan, Cirrus? Oh, naive Cirrus. That's not going to be happening. That's not going to be happening. So, there they are. There they are. If we do, we do, and we'll deal with it. Done. Right. Settings. The default settings are here. Medium, 600 stars. Elliptical, galaxy shape. 10 AI empires. I've raised it from 9. 2 advanced AI starts. 2 fallen empires. 2 marauder empires. Tech and everything at, one, at times 1. Crisis is random. Mid-game start is there. Endgame start is there. Victory is there. Difficulty is at Ensign. I'm not going to be playing on Cadet. I'll be playing on the normal difficulty. Scaling difficulty is off. Air aggressiveness is normal. Empire placement is random. Advanced neighbors are off. Um, Hyperlane density is at 1. I was tempted to put it at 0.75, but we're going to keep it at 1. Uh, abandoned gateways is one. Wormhole pairs are one. You're going to get all this information as we uh, as we go into the actual game. Thank you very much, by the way, for the hype train. That was so kind of you. Caravaneers um, on. We absolutely want caravaneers on. Xeno compatibility, we absolutely want off because that chugs the game. Thank you so very much, Workman, there for the uh, for the choo choo, and thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> So, no Iron Man either, because no. Are we ready to press play and see how things go? Are we ready to press play and have everything go horribly wrong as fanatical purifiers are literally on my doorstep and try and eat rocks? Shall we do it? Shall we see what world we're making? Let's rock. Let's play. I want to say everything, explain things to you for people who don't know. We're going to learn together. We are born from the very depths of June. Away from the harsh glare of starlight, our evolutionary path diverge from that of our immobile cousins, who remain like sentinels above and around us. Unlike them, we gain the ability to move, think, and form a civilization. Easy access to the minerals below ground allowed our Junevan predecessors to industrialize, unifying our species and furthering our cavernous civilization. There were numerous attempts to return to the surface. We never were there. But each time it proved brutal and unforgiving. So we remain below, establishing our dominance from within our planet's very foundations. Now, with the discovery of the hyperdrive, we make our boldest attempt yet to reach out to the stars. And like our ancestors before us, we shall carve out homes from this darkness. Good start! Right, this all looks very confusing to you, I imagine. So, say hi to June. It's here. This is our planet. Say hi to Ven. This is the sun. It's a class F star. Say hi to all of these little um, planetoids around us, like Apetia, and uh, Tricht, and Bashkam, and Cheen, and Zoikel. Say hi to June. Say hi to all the worlds around us. 
We are right on the planetary core! Oh, the galactic core, rather. Look at the planetary core right there! That's a spawn! That's a spawn! So! Here we are! I'm gonna save right now so that we have, uh... A, uh... A thing here. I don't know! I've not met any of them. So! Things to consider. First off, we have people. We have these people here. I don't know how to rename them. Uh, ah yes! We can rename people! So there are four people here to be renamed. There is uh, Utuk Unit, Nin Abite, Tem Might, and Bosch Nez. We need to rename these people. Go to the leader's screen to see all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, leaders, 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 leaders. There we are. Uh, we're not changing... Oh, there we are. We have four or five people. So, this is where we get to name people. So, we're rolling. Uh, suppose you're the governor. You're the you're the governor. Demon Dragon is governor. All right, who's going to be? Oh, E S S S J. You are going to be our scientist. Oh, E S S S J. You are our first scientist. We're all doomed. Now nah, you'll be fine. You have a uh, building cost and district cost projections. Everyone who talked the last 15 minutes are eligible. Uh, ah, scientist. PGW Chaos. You're a scientist. If you're here, you're up on the block. Yep. Uh, ah, I can't have all of that there. We'll call you Tiny Train World. You are another scientist. You can. Well, well, we'll we'll try it. Hang on. We'll try it. We'll try it. Welcome to. Yep, it'll let me. Okay. One more. Oh, Bindle! You're researching physics. So there we go. That's all the people right now. That's all the names we've got at the moment. He's about explosions in the labs. It'll be fine. Right. So, here's our world. As you can see here, we have minus two in amenities. So here's our stability, how stable things are. Here's our crime. It's um, not bad. Available housing, absolutely loads of it. And I mean loads of it. Amenities. They're negative. That's what keeps people happy. And jobs and everything else. Uh, available jobs are there. Nobody's unemployed. We have some features, though, like industrial wasteland. And all this that I can't... I can't get rid of right now. Clearing these creates population. <laughs> Which is interesting. If we want more pop, we can spend a thousand minerals to get more population. <laughs> Also, we can get population from sprawling, and uh, this will create a uh, a searing desert, which makes generator districts, and this will create agriculture districts. So there we go. We're just digging out. There are some people frozen. Anyway, not going to be doing that right now. So our initial concerns are spreading out this way and this way, like hemming in this system here and here, and picking a direction to travel in. And also building another science ship. Because we need another science ship. Here is our shipyard. It is uh, orbiting around... Uh, it's right there. Our shipyard is uh, there. I stepped to make a bug. Uh, <laughs> nope. So we're going to make another science vessel. It's going to take all of our alloys. But we need two science ships if we're going to start exploring around quickly. So let's build a science ship. Right now. <laughs> The other thing we need to do is pick research. So, we have three people, and they can pick different research topics. 
they appear randomly. And for Bindle, we have, um... You don't want to explore too fast, though. These are not good choices. They just die. They are, they are living things, they'll eventually just die. These are kind of bad. I mean... Fusion power is not bad. Fusion power process generates a great amount of power, but without many of the risks. Sure. We want zero G refineries as a matter of urgency because we eat rocks. You'll notice we have zero food. That is because we consume minerals. So we need zero G refineries for more mining output. This is important. Hmm. Population growth speed. Yeah, we eat rocks. Hmm, that's interesting. But this is probably better for us right now. Right. Important things to do. Explore. This science vessel with uh, our good friend uh, ESSSJ, with a bonus to surveying, is going to survey over here. You can't claim a system until it is surveyed. So I want to survey this system. And unlike most starts, where you only have 100 minerals, we have 300 minerals. So we can just claim everything in the system immediately, as opposed to making only one order. And we're going to let time commence. Are we ready? Too bad, we're going. Meow! Look at us go! You're rushing out there. You're going this way. Make it things. We have to... Oh. Saint Bass is the new heir to our empire and will take the throne when our current ruler dies. Ooh, a pouch of gold. As someone who doesn't know the first thing about this game, could someone tell me the first thing about this game? No. Can we rename the heir? I don't know. Probably not until they actually become the heir. Oh no, we can rename them. We can rename them. Uh, oh, need to change this to Saad, by the way. Uh, Shield of Hope. There we go. So when Gavrock dies, Shield of Hope will uh, become the new heir. You're going to be waiting a while. Mayhem. This guy lives Yippee. for ages. Also, Ronan there just subscribed. 20 months. Witness me. Witness me indeed. Mm. Thank you so very much. Did someone say Bosham? Sure. Let's pretend someone said Bosham. Hello, Zanya. So, we're going to whiz over to here. And here we are. With Zoltan 2. There's a 20 world, a 16 world, and a 19 world. Ooh. So what's going to happen is he's going to start uh, doing some surveying. Is the worst enemy of our empire natural erosion? No, it's going to be all the other spacefaring species that are going to try and eat our face. So, pause, because the game's always going unless you pause. Do we have anyone to recruit? Yep. Science ship popped up, but we can't do anything with the science ship yet because we don't have the unity to recruit you, but we will have the unity to recruit you uh, in a bit. You are going to go that way. And we're going to leave you there until we have the unity to recruit a scientist, because scientists have the magical ability to transport themselves wherever they like. Like, literally just wherever they like, they can just go there. Anomaly found. We have found an anomaly. Playful ruins. Impressive structures litter a small area on the surface of Zoltan 2A, practically begging for some archaeological work. We're going to research it. It's going to take a while, but we're going to research it. We're going to research every anomaly we come across, because they can give us more resources, they can give us cool bonuses, and ultimately, we want cool anomaly things. Right. We're recruiting you, because you have survey speed improvement. You're available. Also, we can rename you. New person! 
There's no pool for this. Yeah. Oh! Sonya! You're the scientist! There you go. Also, edicts. We have 120 points. We can sort of just do everything. We can fortify the border. We can veneration of saints. Uh, we can information quarantine. I can just do it all because I have 120 points. So why don't I? Why don't I? They seem pretty good. They're all active. The edict puts strict checks on the flow of information, better preserving the local cultural identities. Plus five stability, which makes our society more stable, and governing ethics attraction plus 50%. Veneration of souls, priest output plus 20%, spiritualist ethic attraction plus 25%. And fortify the border immediately gives us 50% starbase upgrade speed and two extra starbase capacity. And I can do it all for free. Because I have scientists who can do that. So you're going to survey this system. Check to see if you have a temple of Dune already, by the by. Uh... Temples! They turn amenities into unity. And they turn consumer goods into amenities and unity. Yep. Simple constructs erected since time Im uh, immemorial. Temples are places for quiet contemplation and communion with that that unites us all. So I'm going to build a hollow theater in a little while. I need some minerals, but I'm going to build them. <laughs> Uh, for now, we're just gonna explore. We can go to you. You're you're just scanning a planet there. Look at you, scanning the thing. Look at you, scanning a thing. And we just wait. You're researching. It's gonna take a while, but that's okay. <laughs> now. We always hire more scientists. There are no scientists I want to hire right now. We're just going to wait. Uh, by the way, Unity uh, accumulates. You can spend it as a resource, but it accumulates to create traditions. And traditions are what we need to gain perks and bonuses. And we want perks and bonuses. We also want another construction ship. So that we can start spreading out and claiming things soon. We have discovered an archaeological site. We're going to be digging these up eventually. Anyone home? Our survey ship has scanned Valus 1 and detected some artificial structures worth a closer look. Unnervingly, there are no signs of any population down there. Huh. We'll look at that later. Not right now, though. Not right now. So building these uh, stations allows us to exploit these resources, adding them to our total pool of gained resources. Oh. So any bets on how quickly we get totally destroyed? I don't know. We'll find out. The Juven formation is abuzz with news of the alien remnants that we've recently studied. These leavings are considered definite proof of intelligent, purposeful alien activity at some point in the past. We may still be alone now, but at least not the first to be so. Remarkable! I mean, who knows? Oh! First contact protocols, this is important. Our recent encounter with alien life forms has reignited and made suddenly more urgent the old debate on how we should approach contacting any potentially intelligent alien civilizations we may meet. While some advocate focusing on establishing friendly relations as quickly as possible by contacting them with a message of peace, others advise caution, pointing out that we cannot know whether alien minds bear ill intent towards us and that it would be unwise to let them know too much about us before it is necessary. A third, more radical group, push for preemptive action against them. With the security of all Juven at risk, they say, we dare not hesitate to take whatever measures necessary to gain the upper hand against any potential Xeno threat. So, if we greet them with open arms, we cannot attack the neutral entities. Other empires will find it easy to establish communications with us. We gain a 50% more influence from each successful first contact. 
So we gain more influence, and influence is important for spreading. We need influence to gain territory. I did. Uh, oh. Crap. There you go. It is wise to be cautious. Policy on first contact set to cautious. You can't attack neutral entities. Other nations will find it harder to establish connections with us, but negative first contact events are less likely to happen. And then there's, we will ward off those who threaten us. We can attack anything and enables hostile first contact options such as abduction and dissection. We're not gonna go with that one. That's not a good idea. Being cautious, however, might be a good idea. <laughs> no, we're not We're not going to be doing that. That's a good way to get yourself killed. We don't know how powerful the people are up there. We're going to be cautious. It is wise to be cautious. It'll make it more difficult, but it's less likely we're going to get killed horribly. Also, so, a wonderful joy about our species is that we are really, really good at colonizing things. Like this planet that has 100% habitability because we live underground and we're lithoid. So pretty much most planets we come across are going to be great for living on. They're going to be great. Also, we're going to build a third science ship in a moment. Because we want more science. No, we won't default to closed borders, probably. Um, we're not xenophobic. Uh, default to open. If you're xenophobic, it defaults to closed. But we're not. Attrition complete. Excellent! Uh, you are investigating a thing. You have three orders, so we're more likely to have that done first. So you go there. And we're gonna build... You can't, there are no habitable gas giants. Uh, you, you can only have it colonize planets. Third sign ship. We are going to be spending our influence early. We want a lot of sign ships because we want to find out what's out there quickly. Oh, speaking of which, first tradition. You defaulted to marginalized economy. Um, ooh, which is mm, alloys. Ooh, what do I want? No, actually, I want more alloys. I want more alloys. Consumer goods is not is fine. We can deal with less consumer goods. I want alloys so I can expand faster. That's what I want. I want more alloys. As for traditions, these are things that give you permanent buffs, and when you complete a tree, you get to complete an ascension perk. No. We're one year in. We, we've not met anyone. We are going to pick... Discovery, because discovery is important. Discovery is very important for the first one. Because it gives you... Our curiosity about the universe is what got us this far, and there is still so much left to discover. Unlocks an edict that we can just get. And anomaly research speed is increased by 20%. Uh, speaking of that edict, um, yeah. Let's enact that as soon as we get 10 more unity, because it gives us more survey speed and anomaly chance discovery. So we're going to do that. We're going to get that pretty much immediately, as soon as we get a little more unity. Oh look, we got more unity. So now we're even better at uh, doing this. So our, col our um, ships are really, oh, really fast. Abandoned Amusement Park. The structures on Zoltan 2A are not as old as we first believed. It seems to be a playground or amusement park of some sort. Science Officer SJ notes that many of the contraptions are highly complex creations that we can learn much from, and that to the Boulder's aliens, uh, to Bill's aliens' eyes, this might have been a cutting-edge sensor array or even a gigantic art installation. Regardless, to us, Joomva, it looks mostly like a place where you would take your young 
and let them amuse themselves. We gained some society and engineering research. The amount of which we're gaining, we can check there every month. All of these pluses indicate how much we're gaining or losing something a month. Uh-oh what? There's no uh-oh to anything. So, new science ship. Uh, we don't have a new person we can recruit, though. We're gonna have to wait on that. So we're just gonna sit here for a moment. We need more unity. I want you to head up, though. Okay, that's a 70% habitable planet, because it's tropical. Still pretty good! When we get 200 unity, we'll recruit a third scientist and we will start exploring. If, right, one thing to explain here, choke points. This is a choke point. If I build a station here and claim this territory, all that is mine without having to explore it. And that's exactly what I'm going for. This here is an automatic choke point. We're gonna try and claim this, and explore out here, and see what we can find. We're gonna be a weird empire. We're gonna be blobbing out, as it were. Hey, Grimoth, raiding with, whoa, that's a lot of people. Oh, 77! It's more than three! Hello, Grimoth, I hope you are well this day. We're playing some Stellaris. We're also going to be building a hollow theatre to, uh, make some, uh, oh no. Get some more unity. And then, honestly, we can, uh, make one of these. Might be a good idea. Can't, we're lacking the minerals, but we'll do that for now. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Ready to protect the food rock stores. Not by throwing rocks, that's not how that works. So the hollow theater will help deal with our amenities issue. System geology charted. Ooh. We have finished surveying. We have received recovered artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Valus 4A. From what we have translated so far of their language, we have learned that these aliens called themselves the Erasian Concordant. They were an interstellar power that held sway over this region of the galaxy for a little over a, a little over a million years ago. Hello, Grimoth. I hope you are doing very well. Javorian precursors. Yep. They appear to have been six limbed mammalians, and there are several references to some sort of plague called the Javarian Pox, which swept across their empire with devastating results, possibly leading to their extinction. Interesting! Situation log updated. Okay, so first thing you're doing is uh, you're surveying over here, and you are. Oh, no. Okay, there's two of them here. I don't want you there, I want you there. And you, to right click, claim this place by building a star base. 75 influence, 90 alloys, done. It has been claimed, or will be claimed. Uh, you are going to move ahead, or you can't. Wait until we get a little more influence, and then we'll buy another scientist, and then we will see what we can do. Did we change it to a, a row rather than a spawn location? I don't know. How common is I don't know! I've never played a complete game. Hello, uh, Kalem. This is a very casual, very slow, very relaxed game. System geology charted. By the way, you can't build a starbase yet because you don't have enough, uh, thingy. Uh, we do have enough to get another person, though. Ooh, someone is about to be kicked out of doing research. Hang on. Because we're going to do this and change your name, because you have a spark of genius. <laughs> so we have another scientist, everyone. Uh, Leogon255. You are going to be a scientist. Because we can change Bindle over to this person. Bindle, you're now on a science ship. Have fun! <laughs> you are going to start surveying this way. And the other person is going to start surveying this way. 
Now, we wait. Don't contact an alien disease. Be a bit difficult. We're made of rock. So, how are you all doing? Being nice and chill here, just, you know, relaxing. Ooh, looks hey, we just claimed a system. That system's ours now. Build a mining station. What would it take to colonize this world? 200 amenities, 200 alloys, 200 food. 200 food slash minerals. Hmm. I could buy some and start colonizing it immediately. It seems like a good idea to colonize it immediately. It's a really good world. Habitability on it is great. We should totally get some stuff. Also, we should totally clear some of our blockers here. Like, uh... Like that one. Bit expensive to buy alloys. Yeah. It is. I'll wait for a moment. Why do we need minerals? Um, because you need to send food with you. They have to survive the journey. That's why. So they're going to exploit that. And he's going to move over to there. We're going to keep this area, hopefully. Have it all be fine. I think only three science ships should be sufficient. Choke point there. Choke point there. Hmm. Choke points here. Hmm. Thinking about where I can go. Problem is we need so much stuff. Like, okay, build an outpost here. We need to claim all three of those worlds that are wonderfully habitable. They're all habitable. What about four? Because the lowest we have for habitability is 70% here. We can colonize everything. If it exists, we can colonize it. I'm crazy. I'd like to run with about five science ships. Yeah, I know, but we need alloys for other things, too. I might have a fourth. Anomaly found. Oh, that's very hard. There are signs of activity by an ancient precursor civilization on this inhospitable rock. Um, uh, we're going to leave that for the moment. It's going to stay there. That is 1,800 days. We're going to come back to that one. Accretion complete. I like how it's called accretion. Oh, you've surveyed that one. That one's kind of rubbish. Go here. Survey in that direction. Only 1,800? That's like five... That's over five years, because there's also a penalty, because we're not a high enough level. Do we want to sit here for five years, or do we want to spend time exploring this way? Um, we also probably want to build another science ship. Dare I say it, we probably want four. We probably want to science as far as we can science. I'm feeling like four science ships might be what we want. Because you're going that way, you're going that way, like... Do I want four, or am I fine with three? Hmm. It's day. I think colony ship is more priority. Yeah, I think so too. We'll save it. We'll save it for now. Okay, you've colonized, you've, you've surveyed that, so go that way. Hopefully that's a dead end. I really hope that's a dead end. Anomaly found. That is a lot shorter. That, that's a lot smaller. I'm, I'm fine with you anomalying that one. That one's only half a year. Oh, another tradition. Hey, who wants to pick to boldly go? A new age of exploration is upon us. As we once mapped the surface of our homeworld, we must now brave new terrain, space. This is a galaxy full of wonders waiting to be discovered. Who wants more anomaly speed, survey speed? Who wants 35% more? I do. Did you adopt map the stars? Uh... If it was an edict, I adopted it. 
because I can adopt all of them and still have over half of my edict pool in change. <laughs> yes, I did. I adopted all of them. So you want to move down there. The problem is, is I really want to colonize this area too. Oh, habitable world survey. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to June. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus on planetary surveys, our planetary surveys on habitable, life bearing world. This is a commendable effort. I mean, we will gain 300 influence if we say no. Oh, sorry, 300 unity. But we will find plenty of worlds. Situation log updated. Like, I really want to colonize this, um, like, claim this system. Like, I know alloys are important for the colony ship, but I really want to claim Parima. But then again, it probably won't get taken away from us, like, super early. We should be alright. It should be fine. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll build us. We'll build a. Uh... Oh, you gained a level. Well done. Uh, small one. That's fine. Wait there for me. We'll wait. Okay, that's definitely a dead end. That's good. There's trade goods here. Also, I need to turn on the light. Okay, you've also gained a level. Alien writing. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing on the surface of Ustir 3. The massive script contains a large portion of the planet's upper atmosphere. Uh, upper atmosphere. It appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. Add some research to this place. <laughs> You're still surveying. Found. Oh, that's a pretty short one. Ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference in the Omicron per se system. Well, you want to make something last forever? Why don't you uh, put it on uh, a planet? So, colonizing. We click Valus 3. We colonize Valus 3 with Junven. So I want to be Valus Prime. Hmm. Huh. Uh. I'm thinking of going with a rock theme. No, I'm going with a rock theme. <laughs> going with like a rock and gem theme. Diamonder. It's our first colony. It's going to be called Diamonder. Diamonder. That is going to be our first colony. Go. Nope. Diamonder. First colony, Diamonder. We'll be claiming this system afterwards. Oh. Silicon life form. Some kind of burrowing silicon-based life form inhabits a vast network of tunnels beneath the barren surface of Vistora 6A. As best as we can tell, the creatures feed off rocks and there is evidence to suggest that they possess a rudimentary form of intelligence. Their tunneling efforts have shuffled large amounts of valuable minerals to the surface. Perfect! We need that! We need more minerals. Yay, science! We're two years in, and it's almost been an hour. <laughs> Hope you're all having fun, and just relaxing. It's a nice little chill game. So you're all doing that. Sonified science! The GV Identital crew have Whoa, success- a oh, pouch of gold! Uplift the worms! No, not an option. But thank you very much, Necromancer. Thank you. 
The GV Indetail crew have succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within the unusual pattern of interference in the Omicron Percy system. The signal is a song. A complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that science officer SJ cannot seem to get out of their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible length level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodesics suggest a point of origin from outside our galaxy. Curious! Research and society. And physics. Perfect! We definitely want to go this way. Notice, by the way, the places that we know of are in this grey area, and the places in our sphere are there, in this blob. We are Anomaly found. Ooh, there are signs of activity by an ancient because of civilization on this rock. Oh, uh, we'll be back for that. That's a big one. Anomaly found. That's not so big. Um... Unusual readings suggest there may be more to this desolate world than meets the eye. Sure. That one's not as long. Hey, I don't mind Tomb Worlds. We can colonize them pretty well. Colonize everything pretty well. I'm missing four. I'm missing four. Come on. There we go. I can colonize that now. I can take that over and block off these three systems. That one gained a level. Demon Dragon, well done. Do I want a third construction ship? No, we're not spreading fast enough for that. Oh! Another tradition. Now, I could keep going down this path, or I could pick something else. Really, I should probably just finish this path as soon as possible, because we're in the exploration phase. It's a good idea to just start going. Oh, look! Research subsidiaries! I mean, is that energy or is that unity? Because if that's unity, I can pay for it. I don't remember if research subsidies is an energy one. <laughs> expansion is not bad for the beginning. Uh, expansion. Colony development speed is increased. Starbase influence cost is reduced by... Ooh! Ooh, that's actually quite good. Starbase influence cost reduced by 10%. That'd be quite nice. Also, right now, it's just colony development speed gets bigger. I might want that. Hmm. No, we're going to go with this. We're going to go with this, and we're going to get that as soon as we can. 17 months. System Geology China. Excellent. Survey that way. I'm going to try and get to there as quickly as we can. We're just going to start claiming things now. That's the plan. Start claiming things as quickly as possible. Accretion complete. Excellent. Build a research station. System survey complete. Excellent. Survey that way. How fast can we colonize? Relatively quickly. I want to build another construction ship. Uh, three construction ships seems like a good amount. I know it takes up our resources, but I think three is a good amount. We can spread that way, that way, and that way, that way. We spread like rocks falling from a mountainside. We're a landslide of progress. Right, we could claim this. Oh! Primordial soup. Nestled in sheltered pockets around Omicron Perseus 1 surface is a rich sludge of simple organic compounds that our researchers believe could be a hotbed for abinogenesis, the spontaneous formation of organic life from lifeless matter. Omicron Perseus 1 has an unusually thick atmosphere for a barren world, which could make it hospitable for simple life forms. Although no this presents a unique opportunity to study what could be in early stages of organic origin of life, it would be best to set our expectations low, as it may still be a millions of years before life evolves naturally on Omicron per se, if at all. Fascinating. <laughs> Very fascinating. Construction complete. Excellent. You oh, 
Anomaly found. Another one! This one is hellish difficulty. Leave it for now. Like, uh... Okay, colony ship has been completed. Would I be up? Okay, Cav, help me out here. This is a dead end, isn't it? This is absolutely a dead end, so I don't need to worry about here. Like, nothing's going to be able to go down here. Yes. So instead, we survey this way. We survey that way. Colony ship, by the way, is there. They're going to go over there, colonize. Uh, you would see the beginning of a line otherwise. Okay. There's a line there. A line there. Okay. Construction ship here. You're going that way. You're going that way. Ooh, another planet. That's an arid world. I've got some good choke points right now. I'm planning to be a lot bigger than this, though. Planning to be a lot bigger. So now, what we do is we claim this system. Just claiming systems. The more systems we claim, the more powerful we're going to get. We have 1.7k. We could start um, clearing more of these blockers. Clear those two blockers. Which means that we'll gain more districts. System survey complete. The first Junevan colony. Our colony ship has gently touched down on the outskirts of a large oasis on Deer Monda. Situated at the foot of a large mountain, this ideal location provides shelter from the wind and has easy access to water. The ship has been permanently converted into administrative headquarters of the new settlement, and its reactor core is in the process of being removed so that it may serve as the colony's temporary power source. Hundreds of small tents and prefab shelters have sprung up around the former starship's massive hull as the colonists begin to disembark in large numbers. The first Junevan city on an alien world. A great day for the Junevan formation! We have Diamonda. It has things we can't get rid of. <laughs> Missing technology, subterranean colonization. Huh. Deep crust engineering. We'll get these big tons of mining districts. Oh my word, look at how many mining districts we have. We are going to be building mining districts. Ever. Yeah, dust caverns. Max moat harvesting traps plus one. Oh, we have so many mining districts here. That is so good. Also, speaking of which, um, on this planet, we can actually build mining districts to, uh, like, three mining districts would... So if we go, like, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. If we build three mining districts and three ha housing districts, we can clear all these building slots and get all of them. Or we could build six mining districts and two housing districts. And that is something that we might do. Six mining districts and uh, two housing districts. I think we might do that. Oh, I have unlimited... Oh, that is true. I have unlimited mining. I could just build... Yeah. But... I need to get building districts. I have unrestricted, but it's still a maximum of six. Thank you very much there, Necromancer. That is so kind of you. So kind. Thank you. That is three gift subs. 189 you've gifted so far. You are so kind and generous. Six later to eight. Yeah, but the perk that we have means that we need to... Uh, it adds slots as well. That's true. I'm thinking in the future. I'm thinking in the future. That's the... Oh, you are. You are idle. Do not be idle. Survey. Do not be idle. You cannot be idle. You're not allowed. We're not building a fleet yet. Uh, we're waiting on that. System geology. Excellent. I... Ooh. Hmm. Down is good, but that way is good, too. I'm very tempted to get a fourth scientist. 
to explore this way. It might be a good idea to get a fourth scientist to explore that way. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. It's a lot of alloys I could use into colonizing another area. But we can't colonize that area yet. We don't have the influence. I probably should. Also, that's a lot of minerals. And a unity upkeep, too. Yeah, but we're earning 36 unity a month. I think we're good. Is our pulsar to the left of our glorious empire? I don't know. There's a planet. This is a new stream game? Yes, it is. It's the replacement to- Hey, we got some tech. Zero G refineries. Mining station output plus 10%. The addition of internal refineries on mining stations has substantially increased mineral production. We need that because we eat rocks. Right, new tech. High geothermal fracking. You know what? I think that might be really good. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm, I'm getting there. Geothermal fracking. <laughs> well, with a couple of research labs. They do require upkeep. We don't have the things to upkeep them yet is the problem. Like, we don't have the, the amenities to upkeep them. So I'll build one for now. <laughs> one lab, one industrial district? Uh, could! Problem is, we only have so many um, things right now. Consumer goods. Yeah, they're the same thing. They're not. You have... Do I build another science ship? This area looks really big. There might be a good choke point. If I can get there. Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Another science ship. Let's get another science ship going. We have four. It's gonna slow down our spread, but that's fine. No, this is a regular slot. This absolutely is a regular slot. Oh, new tradition. High starbase influence cost reduced by 10%. That seems good. That seems very good. Then we can spread even faster. You're building s oh, you're not building stuff. I'm being... Oh, no. We're lacking set 11 and 7. So, in a couple of months. Well, maybe claiming this one is more important. Claiming this one is more important. Science vessel is available. You, anomaly chance. I'm lacking the unity, but I'll get the unity soon. Couple of months. Move you in the meantime to here. It's it's pretty big. Space is very big. I believe somebody said that once. System Geology Charted. Right. I really want to explore this way too with two people. <laughs> I want to explore in like 70 million directions. But I can't. Claim this. Claim that. Oh, you are idle. Do not be idle. One, two, three, one, two, three. Go this way. <laughs> Hello, Alias. How, how goes it? I hope you're well. By the way, that's a 70% habitable world. 
Doing pretty good at worlds. I want to colonize that world over there, by the way. Absolutely a world I want to colonize. Om nom nom minerals. Want to get there as a choke system. System oh. complete. Mm, that's gonna be a little awkward. Gonna be not that easy to choke point here unless we get that. Rock is new tech. New tech, we're rocking it. Biodiversity studies. Studying different forms of life that appear in our world helps us better understand ourselves and the life that surrounds it. That's good, but this is better. Grants a lump sum of unity and gives you just more unity. Plus, campaigns. Like, I think we want to get more unity, which gives us more progression towards an ascension perk. Good plan. Also, it only takes, takes 80 months. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Also, we can get that scientist now. Yep. He's still there. I want you. In Uden. You. Ah, uh, this person. We are going to have you. Start exploring this way, because I need to see what's in this direction, as quickly as possible. We're only five years in, folks. We're only five years in. Complete. Excellent. Oh! At first glance, this planet does not seem capable of supporting living beings, but nevertheless, we have detected life signs emanating from somewhere beneath its frozen surface. Yeah, it won't take long. Research it. Build. Build. Oh, we're lacking rocks. We've been using all of our rocks. Yeah, you gotta talk. There is no pool. Right, claim that. We want that because that's 15 minerals. That's 15 minerals. I'm also tempted to send someone up here to explore in this direction. And a planet. Yep. We need mines. No, we have plenty of resource generation. We're just using it a lot expanding. We're just using it a lot. Also, lacking influence. Oh! Cool thoughts. We didn't detect life forms below the surface, we detected them in the entire world. The frozen planet is interspersed with micro-thin tubes linked like a rudimentary computer. With the structure, with the, while the structure is primitive, its gigantic scale means it could probably rival some of June's supercomputers in output. Even now, the computer seems to be active. Our scientists can interface with it, but since it's so slow, we would only be able to ask it a single question. Can you solve this calculation to give us 742 research? Who made you to gain 661 and three minor artifacts? Who came before us? For a very rare Isarian artifacts recovered, what are we for 900 unity or just for a research? I mean, Isarian artifacts recovered might be very good. Erasian, sorry. Erasian artifacts are not common. We might want to go for the Erasian artifact. Hmm. Yes, what came before us? We gain one artifact, which if we go into our society, sorry, into our, um, sorry, our situation log, precursors, the uh, Erasians, we have one out of six. We get six, we get a lot. No, the game will speed up over time, Mr. Dark. The beginning is always slow. The beginning is slow.
The beginning is slow, it speeds up as the game goes on. We've got to hit the hay. So long, Sonya, have fun. Oh, we are losing consumer goods now. But we're making that industrial district, which will help out. The... Er I don't know. I think the Javorian pox killed the Arassians. We're getting Arassians. But either way. Ooh, another planet there, by the way. <laughs> that we can just colonize. At some point. Okay. You're gonna do that. Still lacking influence. Still lacking influence. Influence is the one thing we don't have. Anomaly found. Oh, hang on. Efforts to map the surface of this moon have identified a strange mountain range in the southern hemisphere. It does not appear to have formed naturally. Research. That's going to be sorted in a moment. Um, I'm really tempted to have another science ship going that way. Like going this arc, this arc, that arc, this arc. Five science ships, I think, is probably what we're going for. Yeah. We're going five. <laughs> we're going five science ships. I can always get rid of them later. Exploring down this area is going to be very important. Excellent. Go there. You're building a mining station. Oh, somebody leveled up. Yeah, but we have 36 gain. We're fine. Research complete. Oh, hang on. Sensors picked up rhythmic movement on the hellish surface of Morenius 1A. Researcher. And we finished fusion power. Fusion power processes generate a great amount of power for ships, but without many of the risks associated with fission power. <laughs> Administrative AI for 5% extra research speed. I know blue lasers are there, but a flat 5% research speed is wonderful. Also, our one, our three ships here can upgrade for a grand total of 28 resources, which we're going to do. And the science ship is available. Hmm, nobody really good here, though. I mean, we're just going to have to pick someone. They're not going to be great at doing this. So we're just going to pick someone. Or we could wait until next year. Let's wait until next year. We can get you to here. And if it's not changed by then, we can pick someone. Anomaly found. Oh! We have found the wreckage of an archaic spaceship with an unusual design. We're not quite sure how its propulsion system works. Well... Research it! Ships upgraded. Hey, our fleet's been upgraded. Very slightly. It's not ten years. It's a lot, um... It's a lot quicker than that. The number of people that, um... That we... That, um... You get. Like, it could have changed now. Anomaly found. Oh, hang on. Oh, that's very hard. Uh... Leave that one for now. That is a precursor one. That's pretty good. Ah, still there. These every year they cycle. You're still building that mine, those mine stations. Okay, you're done there. Lacking five influence. Get there and change it. Oh, well, maybe. Yay! We've detected the presence of a primitive alien civilization on who. Haranston 1 in the Harazdan system. They are presently in what could be considered a late medieval age, with a firm grasp of metallurgy and a feudal society. The printing press is accelerating the spread of knowledge. Well, we've technically found first contact. They're gonna be a problem. We're gonna have to deal with that at some point. Aren't we? We have discovered, our scientists have discovered something rather monstrous. The mountain range they scanned earlier was in actuality the outer membrane of a gigantic egg. 
What uncertain it's uncertain what behemoth could lay such an egg and what horror could hatch from it. <laughs> do we want to spend ages cracking the egg? Or do we just choose to leave the egg? <laughs> no, why can't why why do that when we can do something else? I could really do with the research. I could really do with the flat research bonus. Like, four research is like 10% of my current research. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, it depends. Hmm. Situation. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Geothermal. The measured pounding observed from orbit is the motion of immense and ancient geothermal extractors, breathing its last. Built and then abandoned at some point in the distant past, the vast batteries of disintegrating machinery have been pumping up superheated fluids in the planet's core ever since. Their storage capacitors are all broken or leaking, but some energy could still be- Hey! A thousand energy credits. That's good. Also, there is a project here. Survey that. We're not going to research that yet. We're going to come to that later. Uh, we're still running out of resources, but we are also building the industrial district there, so we're fine. You are... Actually very good on uh, stuff. Um, we could probably do with some mining districts, honestly. Some mining districts wouldn't go amiss here when we have the uh, the uh, the uh, minerals. The scientific community on June is excited to receive the report on intelligent alien life. They may not be capable of space flight, but the aliens on Horizon One are quantifiably intelligent, and their society shows all the hallmarks of a moderately advanced culture. Prominent xenologists note that this is an excellent opportunity to study a society, perhaps not unlike the ones we previously only found ancient remains of. True? Well, we could do something else too if we wanted to. <laughs> Tons of amenities there. Woo! Tons. We've met a race, they're just not very populous. Or advanced. Okay, has this changed? Ooh, you are cheap. You know what? Cheap is good. We want cheap. Leader cost 50 minus 50% 50 upkeep. You're particularly eager for the assignment. You're hired. New scientist. How do I change your name? Ghost Annie. That is who you are. You. Uh, you're going to survey in this direction. And we are going to colonize this. Or rather take it. We found the wreckage of an archaic spaceship of unusual design. Instead of using propulsion similar to that of modern ships, the craft relied on... Large sails unfurled in the vacuum of space. Presumably, the ship harvested solar energy and drifted on the solar winds created by starlight. New archaeological dig! We like that. Also remember, I'm not even got to this system yet, so I'm not deciding what I'm going to do with it at all. Like, we might conquer it, system we might not. Shattered. We're going round and claiming these areas and seeing what we can do. That's what we're doing. That is what we are doing. You are there. Move to here, ready to claim that. 
So we, we, we could. Oh dear. We have made first contact with an unknown entity. We have made first contact with the mysterious aliens in the Balawa system. For now, we have codenamed them the Mem aliens until we can figure out more about them. If they possess a language, we must decipher it in order to establish communications. News of alien ships humming through the ether has reached June. In many ways, ending the first chapter in the book of the Junevan Formation's bid for a stellar empire. <laughs> what are we looking at here? I don't know. But, now we have made first contact with the mysterious aliens in the Balawas system. For now, we have codenamed them the Memalians. Send our envoy, Cantite. You're going to try and translate. In the meantime, we need to see what's going on there and start claiming systems. You might be waiting a long time, Rogue. Attrition complete. You might be waiting. There. Ah, that's an enclave. That's 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 not terrible. That's an enclave. That's not a uh, another another empire. Oh, we can't build the mining stations. We're lacking minerals, but we're gaining minerals really quickly. Anomaly found. Oh, hang on. Atmospheric readings in Olimar 5 do not match simulated projections. Go for it! System geology charted. Build that. You are here. Go up here, see what's there. There's a lot of stuff here I want. We'll see what it is. Not appeared, they don't come back. They not come back. Says the man with plus four influence. Yeah. Hey, there's a lot of stuff I want here, okay? That's probably gonna be a a an area that we're gonna have to buffer. So many things I want to buffer. Not enough influence. Not enough influence. Anomaly found. A colossal impact hit crater hints that something big collided with the surface of this planet once. Sure. We're going to try and go round, see what we can do. That's our plan. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across Olimar's Fives' face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science Officer Tais uh, Telusonja is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what pur possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow castings might serve. Okay. <laughs> Anomaly found. By the way, you don't need to give me basic tips um, for, for certain stuff. Like, it's appreciated, but I have played this a little bit. Um, strong energy emissions from an unknown surface? Yep, sure. Anomaly found. Sure. Do all these anomalies. What I can do with relics? Probably not what you think. Yeah. We can gain unity. We, we can not do anything with them right now. We can't do that. We do not have the ethics. Okay, we're gaining stuff now. Good. Good. System geology Excellent. Shot. Head down. We want to get to that system there. We're not, we don't desperately need to colonize in this direction. It's this direction we need to claim stuff. Asteroid R66-111 is pockmarked with 
craters from Weapon Blast and appears to have been used as a target range by someone roughly two millennia ago. Residual energy readings suggest they tested increasingly exotic weaponry including subspace bombs and some kind of singularity generator. Our scientists would be interested in studying the unusual energy readings that remain. <laughs> Excellent. We're still the only person in this system. Having decrypted the signal, Bindle was astonished to discover it was broadcasting in an archaic form of one of the main Juven languages. Speaking in these, thous, and whenceforths, it appears to be reciting one of the lost works of Iono Aram, a renowned Juven playwright who lived some 600 years ago. It appears that the broadcasting device, a simple satellite dish projected by a small shelter, is the only natural structure on the planet. There is no hint as to who left it here or why, but going by the wear and tear on evidence, it must have been there since shortly after the play was first written, long before Njuva learned the secrets of space travel. We can only assume it was left there by ancient visitors to Dune, who took a liking to the play and decided to pay our species a strange and unexpected tribute. Further evidence of the superiority of the Dunevan race for a monthly unity and happiness bonus, <laughs> or wonderful news, disseminate the recording across the nation for 628 flat unity. So if we get 15% unity, that is five, five unity per month for five years? Five unity per month for five years, which is five times 12 times five, 300. So we take a, we can either take less unity and get happiness, or we can just give it to the people. It might, but we could grow really quickly with that. So I'm going to pick wonderful news. Disseminate the recordings across the nation. Bing, tradition. Right. Starkeep upkeep reduced by 20%. Empire size decreased. New colonies start with an extra population or... Research subsidies. Research station outputs increased by 20%. Research from construction out... Yeah, that... That might be pretty good. Or we go with science division. For research alternatives increased by one and science level capped by two. More choices is good. I'm gonna pick that. Also, we're only a year away from another one. So you're still doing that. Once you've done that. Oh! Asteroid collision! A large mineral-rich asteroid collided with C at 1 at some point during the previous thousand years in what must have been a major impact event. An abundance of minerals can now be found on the planet in the vicinity of the impact crater. A fortuitous event! We're not doing bad. We're gaining resources. We're gaining lots of stuff. Levels and everything. You're exploring that way. We have the influence now to build that. Oh! The Carninia has been briefed on the unknown vessel that was reported in the Balawa system. Its design does not match anything in records, suggesting that we are dealing with a possible first contact scenario with an alien civilization. With the permission of the Carnelian, we can begin an analysis of the data we have collected to see if their language can be translated. Keep at it. We know nothing about them. Literally nothing. Also, still nothing going on here. <laughs> System geology. Excellent. Go that way. Oh, just not enough. Re Anomaly oh, found. Hang on. The sensor pulse profile of a mid sized vessel was briefly detected inside the upper atmosphere of this gas giant. Sure. Researcher. We are picking up readings of an unknown nature. The signal seems to follow some kind of repeating syntax which could indicate sapient life. It should be investigated further. They seem to be concentrated around a single space station, though it's unclear whether this forms part of a larger spacefaring civilization. Good! Making progress.
Speed in progress. Don't claim that yet. Oh, that ocean world there was 70%. Also... Do I colonize the 70% size 20 world or the 100% 16 world? What do you think, folks? Bigger and bigger and less habitable or smaller? Yeah, I'd say 100 too. Uh, that's this one. We don't have the amenities. I want the amenities, I will buy the amenities. Give me 250 amenities. I will colonize this planet! Emma Elder, or Emma Relda. Oh, Emma, Emmy, Emmy Relda. There we go, Emmy Relda. Excellent. Or Emmy Rolda, because it's Emma Rold. Emma Rolda. There we go. No, Emmy Relda. We're gonna go Emmy Relda. I think it works better. It goes better. It rolls off the tongue better. It's called Emmy Ralda. There we go. Colony ship being built. System survey complete. System survey is complete here. Survey that way. Keep going. Hopefully that's a dead end and then we can just do that to claim lots of stuff. You're still building. Build faster. System survey complete. Efforts to map the surface by identified a strange mountain range. It does not appear to form naturally. Go for it. Anomaly found. First two planets are beautiful gem names. Century later, lumber coal. Odd irregularities. Go for it. Finding a billion things in these uh, places. Okay, that keeps zigzagging round. Now there's only one space egg. Still nobody here. If we're lucky, that was like a far off. Ooh, we have just found something. During its survey of, um... That's a difficult name to pronounce. How am I going to pronounce that? J During the survey of that planet, the JV Igrapenal discovered deposits of rare crystals. These crystals have properties... Um, have, a, ...have properties that make them extremely effective at focusing laser beams, and they are also a critical component in most advanced electronics. In addition, many cultures treasure them as decorations and adornments. While we do not yet possess the means to extract this resource, we should seriously consider establishing control over the system for further exploitation. We want that system. That's got some red crystal high. We have managed to pick up the clear audio feed of conversation between several mem alien ships. While our linguists are still none the wiser as to the meanings of any of these, we are optimistic that the new signal will help them make significant progress towards a breakthrough. It's gonna take us a while, but we're getting insight. We're gaining insight. Okay, you're done. You're doing that now. Okay, that's fine. We're not traveling much at... What was previously thought to be in assorted mountains in the southern hemisphere of Balawar 3 have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated to as 3.4 billion years old, but our scientists have ruled out that Balawar 3 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history. Science Officer SJ has prepared a special research project. Situation line. Alright, uh, special research project. Where? Let's crack the egg. That's the research project. Okay, it'll take a hundred and... No. 
Go there first. Go there first. We need to see what's nearby. Oh! Confusing signals. Our researchers have been making steady progress gathering towards there were a large collection of signals from the He aliens. However, as our knowledge of their language has grown, our linguists have become ever more confused. Apparently, they have to reassess their previous working translation several times after finding out the meanings they had described to words were in fact extremely inaccurate. It seems the whole outlook of the He aliens is very different to ours. Far more than we thought possible. They are receptive! Good! This is good! I'm happy with receptive aliens. Our latest sensory readings from Fargus show the star pulsating regularly, but when the crew of JV and Inferno arrived to the site, there was no evidence to support this. Ooh. While most of the crew are in agreement that the anomaly is caused by a sensory malfunction, science officer Sonya discards this theory. Sonya claims that it discovered pul similar pulsating energy emission patterns elsewhere and now visits something strange is happening to the galaxy's stars. They have charted their course to the nearest affected star. We could do a, a special project, or we can just say nah and get 300 influence. <laughs> 300 influence would get us to our next discovery thing. It just get us there immediately. Trust the bear. We'll get to the bottom of this. Situation log updated. If we go to pulsating stars, it is that. Which star is it? Okay. Is it all of them stars? Okay, no, no, not that. Not that. One of the stars more closely. Okay, one of them. <laughs> okay, go there. Afterwards, research the project. Okay, do that. That's fine. Turn that off for now. No, I, I said turn it off, please. Oh. Oh! That. Sorry. Me being silly. See? Told you you shouldn't trust me to be good at anything. Right. This one. That star. It's the only one. Okay. It's that star. Okay. That was me going, everything! I don't want everything. I just want some things. As we're not especially doing stuff here. Move there for now. Oh, there's that. Starbase upkeep reduced by 20% seems pretty good. Then again, experience gain by plus 25% is also pretty good. I want to get this edict. Because we can just claim it. When we get this, we can just get more research! Attrition complete. Excellent! Build mining stations. Yeah, energy credit upkeep is fine. Oh look! More edicts. Marvelous! More science! We have established communication with the artisan troop. After successfully translating the language, we've established communication. This gets us 26 influence. An alien empire has established communication. We've finished first contact procedures. A visitor, this is such a joyous occasion indeed. Oh, forgive my manners. I believe introductions are in order. We are the artisan troop. 
our members have dedicated their lives to the pursuit of art, music, culture, and all other things that make existence bearable to a sapient being. Please, if you would like to share in the wonders of our creations, do not hesitate to contact us more now, no. Interesting. We've just made first contact with a troop. The Enclave are our f these people are our friends. And, uh... Uh... Something's wrong with the picture there. It was juddering for a moment. Little bug. Greetings, Gavrock. I, the headmaster of the artisan troop, welcome you. What can we do for you? Perhaps produce a work of art for you to enjoy? Or maybe you wish to sponsor our enclave in the creation of otherworldly beauty? If you wish to become your patron... A thousand credits for ten years for ten percent monthly unity. This is a good idea. That would be very helpful, allowing us to try new ideas and take more risks in our creation process. We have a 10-year program with a one-time upfront cost. It's a deal. Commissioning an art piece. Fabulous. We'd be glad to entrust you with one of our creations. It is sure to bring joy to the people of your empire. No, it's not. I mean, they're not wrong. 600, opinion plus 10, gain access to art exhibit for amenities and immigration poll. It's a deal. You might want to do it twice for both planets. Oh, good point. Do we need to do it twice? As in one and then one. I could do that. Okay, it's a deal. Seems good. Decisions. Exhibit art. And. Exhibit art. Perfect. We probably want some mining districts here. Actually, we want an industrial district first. Then a mining district. Okay. That's all good. Also, that immediately gave us uh, a decent amount of influence, which means we can immediately hop, skip, and jump to here and claim that. I probably will, Ronin, don't worry. See you later. A vessel of some kind has crashed into the surface of this asteroid. Wreckage from the craft can still be found. Research. By all means. I mean, we are rock people. Oh, Savannah World. We could totally colonize that at some point. Okay, you're going over there. System survey complete. Colony ship has been made. Research is done. Geothermal fracking. Minerals from jobs. We want nano machine nano mechanics now. You're done. Survey that. Look at all these rocks here. Fourteen rocks. How many colonies do we have? Two and a third on the way. Innovation rollout. Active scans of Dossal 4 have picked up what appears to be a large ship deep inside the atmosphere of the gas giant. Judging by the nearby debris, there have been several failed attempts to salvage this derelict in the past. Any ship strong enough to withstand such crushing gravity must be a magnificent prize, and Science Officer Inudum has proposed a salvage operation. No! The effort is too great, leave it down there, that's 50 influence in our pocket. Right? There. We want that 50 influence. Like, science is good. Influence is better. Are they doing stuff here? Nope, still nothing being done here. We could hop, skip, and jump right to here. Like, right now. Effort is too great. Leave it there. <laughs> no. 
After identifying an anomaly, nope, no salvaging ships. After identifying an anomaly in the gravity well of AR2LF4, the JV um, Ephemeline has discovered the shattered wreckage of an ancient ore superfreighter buried deep within the asteroid's crust. It must have carried a full load when it crashed, and the asteroid's mineral wealth has been revised accordingly. Fantastic. Okay. Oh! New science! Hydroponics farms completely useless to us because we don't eat food. Edict fund also not very useful to us because we have tons of edict points. Population growth speed, however, plus 10%, that's useful. Like, why do we want food? Like, food is useless. Okay, that links up. That links up. So if we can claim these systems, we can link this all up together. It's going to be tricky. And we're sort of sacrificing expanding this way to do it. Get normal people in your empire? If I want them. But why would I want them? I don't need normal people. Non rock people. Anomaly found. Again, why sell that when I can sell other things to them? An ancient orbital shipyard drifts in science above the world. It has suffered significant battle damage, and the entire sections of the thing are missing. Sure. Attrition complete. You are never going to be finished there. So you are claiming that. Actually, you are there already. So cancel there. You go to there. You claim here. Rolling away. Oh! We have encountered a hostile alien. The Sam the Samek aliens. Right, what are we dealing with here? Oh that's a marauder camp. We're not expanding anywhere in this direction anymore. Establishing lithosphere. So, System survey that is as far as we are going in that direction. We still want to claim this, this place. This is actually good, because now we can send this person somewhere else. Like, we can send them in another direction instead. Like, we're not doing anything with you. How's the conquering of everything going? We are not conquering very much right now. We're not going in that direction anymore. Oh boy. At least we don't have to worry about that. Why not the four stars near our main system? Because they are locked in. Like, nothing can claim those, so there's no point in getting them. Like, there's no harm in keeping them as they are. Also, I miss having the Sarantos where we have um, two uh, envoys there. Also, do I need another construction ship? No, not yet. Yeah, absolutely. Could absolutely be a problem. Or we could get powerful enough to conquer them before then. Who knows? Like, marauders are a problem, but guess what? We're just going to have to deal with it, aren't we? Right, that's a dead end. So if we claim here... Maybe start thinking about energy shift? Nope, we're fine. Research speed 5%. Um... I'm gonna go with improved reactor boosters. Elusive aliens. Our attempt to learn more about the Mem aliens has so far been in vain. While we're able to easily assert, ascertain that they clearly form part of a technologically advanced civilization, neither facts have, pro have proven elusive, as they seem to be going to considerable efforts to prevent us and any other eavesdroppers from intercepting any signals from them. We have therefore only managed to intercept small fragments of their language so far. However, from the glimpses we have gained, our linguists are confident they'll be able to decipher their communications if we can just acquire a greater sample size. A proposal has been drawn up for somewhat more aggressive information gathering. Some call it hacking, but they will surely not take kindly to it. 
No. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll get some information, but they'll be mad. We don't want our first contact for them to be mad. They are wise to be cautious. <laughs> they are also hostile. <laughs> well, I think we might have found our first big starbase location. It's there. So the Marauders are not necessarily the biggest problem right now. After conducting their survey, the GV affirmably detected the remains of an automated shipyard in orbit. Ooh. So it's a thousand years old and seems to have been subjected to a heavy missile barrage, but one of its manufacturing bases is still in working condition. Science officer Sonya is confident that power can be restored to the shipyard, Situation but it would be a significant updated. project. Uh, where is that project? Uh, it is... Construction ship in orbit. Okay. A construction ship. We can do that. Oh, no, no. Yeah, finish that, then go there. Okay, you're going there. You're going there. We can claim this system immediately after that. Okay. Uh, you... Exploit that resource. Build the observation post too for now. We'll decide what we're doing with them later. Science ship here is idle. Don't be idle. Anomaly found. A vessel of some kind has crashed on the surface. Wreckage can be found. Okay. I want to claim this system. <laughs> It is a good bottleneck. Build an outpost. Okay, I think we might be alright. Maybe. But I don't think we're expanding very far in this direct- Oh! Look how bottled in this all is. If we can get this one too... God, that'd be really good if this is all hemmed in like that. Doing that. This increases the leadership gain by 25%, a leader level cap by one. We want our people to get better. Sensors are reporting a large number of possible points of interest within the dense debris field surrounding JX4-328. So many things. We will study its designs. A small scout craft of some kind planned to observe the Pisastro a millennia ago, creating a shallow canyon. There are no visible cockpit on the ship, leading our scientists to believe it was either piloted by remote or through some kind of primitive artificial intelligence. Although it is not too, dam too damaged to be salvaged, rather, the ship hasn't been picked clean by looters yet. Excellent. So we're hemming these people in, preventing them from doing anything there. Good, this also means we can claim this planet. We want to claim this planet. We also want to claim these stars, too. <laughs> Although their dwellings on habitat stations would suggest an advanced society, Envoy Men Nell is unsure whether we are indeed dealing with an intelligent life form. They are unremittingly hostile, so much so that a stable society seems almost unthinkable. Even during our brief period of investigation, we have observed several displays of pure barbarism. They seem to have a language, but our linguists are still working on deciphering it so that we can make sense of his display. <laughs> yeah, those are the barbarians. Not the worst thing in the world to, uh... Hi! Oh boy, did we pick the right time to do this. They're there. We have what is commonly referred to as hemmed them in. They are not doing anything there anymore. Good! They're not going this way. Maybe this way they can get to us? That's a good place to place a station. Well, it's not there, because um, that's a dead end.
They could, but an influence premium, they're not going to. The AI doesn't tend to do that. Right, we're going to upgrade this station. System survey complete. Oh, where have you surveyed? Up there. Keep going that way. First proper starbase. Well, there's one over our home system, too. Construction complete. Excellent. Go there. Among the debris, we discovered the shattered remains of a formerly habitable planet. The patterns of fragmentation and the charring on the shard suggest it was blasted with concentrated beams of thermal energy until it cracked from the pressure. This allowed for the mineral rich core to spill out into clumps of high quality minerals. Okay. We have really not colonized in this direction. <clears throat> All that direction. And we need to start colonizing in this direction and that direction. I need another construction ship. <laughs> okay, this seems all everywhere. We need to go in that direction. Let's see what we can find. System geology shot. Excellent. What have you? Oh, you finally done there. Okay, do that. And then go there. We, we need more influence is the problem. We're not getting it. Oh, hang on. We found a bad thing. We made first contact with the Savasic system. We've detected a wormhole. If somehow it could... We have detected what appears to be a naturally occurring subspace phenomenon on the edge of the Savasic system. A rift in the very fabric of space-time was formed here, creating a wormhole that... Our scientists speculate may provide a conduit through subspace to another wormhole located somewhere else in our galaxy. Depending on where the other wormhole is, this could potentially allow ships to travel from one end of the galaxy to the other in a matter of days. Unfortunately, this wormhole, like the vast majority of its kind, is inherently unstable. Any vessels foolish enough to pass through it will be ripped apart in seconds. Also, there's space amoeba here. <laughs> I don't have any envoys. We can't go that way yet because space amoeba. But we do want to head that way and claim that system. For now, you might as well go that way. Space amoeba is fine. We do want another construction ship. Uh, have I built another construction ship? Uh, not a colony ship. Construction ship. That's a 100% habitable world, by the way. It's only size 12, though. Mm, it's only size 12. The space amoeba is going to be a blockade for lots of people. I'm not worried about it. Could build some ships. We probably should build some ships, though. Some ships, it might be time to build a couple. But we're still expanding right now. I, I, I'm alright. Hello! Ooh! Res uh, resonance imaging of this asteroid suggests an internal composition consisting of rare crystals. Go for it. Go for it. I do want to build that. that um, yeah, the construction ship is being built. Oh, you're, you're exploring there already. You're doing that. You go here. Survey that system. You're building a starbase there. A new faction has recently gained gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Juven Formation. Led by Carnelian Gavrock, they call themselves the Union of Spiritual Philosophy. Their members support spiritualist and conservative values. A disgruntled faction will be a source of trouble, but one that approves of the government could be useful. Ah, let's see this faction. Oh, they seem very happy. <laughs> Allowing for the replacement of organic life for the robotic workers will displease the Union. Pious po uh, polity. 
having spiritualist values be reflected in our empire governing ethics will please the union and homogeneity pious minds think alike and have at least 25 percent population be some form of spiritualist so they basically love us and we gain bonus unity for that marvelous seems like a good faction to me oh another wormhole Attrition complete. we finished communications Ooh. A collective intelligence. Our efforts to decipher the signals picked up from the Mem aliens have paid off, and we are finally able to open diplomatic channels with the civilization we now know as the Prosnark uh, Prosnarkan Entity. Remarkably, they appear to be completely lack the concept of individuality that is inherent in the Juvan species. Indeed, the lack of concept of individuality that is inherent in the Juvan... Uh, indeed, the individual... Um, Prosnark and Drone has no free will or thought whatsoever and is a mere pawn of the hive mind. Far from chafing under such light control, our researchers speculate that the Prosnarkin have evolved him to depend on this collective intelligence and would not be able to survive without it. We could study them and gain research output for 15 years, or we can gain a crud ton of science. Oh no, research app. Mm. I'm gonna go with studying them, because science is something we need. A fascinating specimen. We will find out much how such a phenomenon is possible. Communications established with we are the Prosnarkin entity, and we speak as one. The hive mind has taken note of your presence. We will observe for now. Our future actions will depend upon whether you are a threat, an opportunity for expansion, or an unforeseen variable. Well, we're not doing that. What's their opinion of us? Uh, minus 92. Praise the divine for this meeting. Let's see if we can work on that. The news that we have encountered intelligent alien life for the first time has been received with mixed feelings for our populace. This confirms what we have long suspected. We are not alone in this galaxy. Each new alien species we encounter represents both an opportunity and a threat. We must be wary. These particular Xenos have a level of technology similar to our own, indicating they achieve spaceflight at roughly the same time. This changes everything. Also, we still have some other first contacts. Um... The Sin Aliens. Let's research, let's do them quickly. Um, right, this gave us more influence, which is good because we need more influence to claim more systems. Do we claim L Litugena? Probably. If we claim Litugena, then there's no system two jumps away that they can then claim. Oh, we haven't surveyed it yet. Go survey that system now. Then claim it. So they're not necessarily friendly. Uh, hmm. Right, I think we need a few ships. I think it's time to build a couple of ships. You know, four. You might want a shipyard at the base? Good idea. Let's build a shipyard there too. We'll build some ships there, and then we'll build a shipyard here, and a, uh, a, uh, crew System thingy. Geology charted. Build a shipyard. Where are you? You are there. <laughs> Keep surveying in that direction, please. So, found some aliens. Claim this system. Beautiful. We might want to, at the very least, work on getting things a little bit stronger. Special project complete. 
One of the, on the crew's arrival, they were able to confirm that their sensors were indeed malfunctioning. The good news is that not only were their initial estimates of the enemy's star creating your SOS understated, Sonya seems to have learned from the past mistakes. No, oh, we now have energy instead. Alright, that's cool. They have... They have a transport crew there. Upon entering Savasic, our sensors picked up strange readings. Thank you very much, Balfour Z. 27 months, that's so kind of you. Kiko Stellara stream, ooh, indeed. Thank you very much. Dis dismissed at first as glorified asteroids, things quickly changed and we discovered that these entities reach react aggressively to movements in space, even at great distances. Observation of these entities, preferably from a safe distance, is advised. Okay! Special project complete. The JV Selenia growth has successfully restored power to the automated shipyards. The fa facility immediately resumed its uninterrupt its interrupted construction order, using what materials it had in hand to build an advanced frigate of unknown design. Unfortunately, the ancient facility broke down completely after and has been deemed beyond repair. We have sent a crew to the new ship and passed it on to our fleet. That is a frigate. I mean. It's a ship. It can join our, uh, it can join our crew, our little thing. Sure. I'll take it. Free ship. Very nice. Oh, hang on. Having decoded what counts as a language among them, Elvoy Mennell has identified the Samic aliens as the nomadic civilization known as the Vool Freebooters. They occupy a number of large space stations in and around the Orthama system that house the bulk of their massive numbers in crowded and squalid conditions. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, they seem to have developed a strong martial culture. Life in the cold void has become second nature to them, and they're very adept at space warfare. Adept, rather. There is no Vul central government to speak of. Instead, they are divided into several distinct factions that vie endlessly with one another for resources and respect. Given their large population and the shipbuilding capability of their stations, this constant infighting is the only thing keeping them from growing into a significant threat to galactic peace. Keep note of them. Attempt to contact them. An alien empire has established communication. Hey! More Dwamax! What you want, foolish Dwamax? What happened to make your face look like that? Reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? Hey, look at you! We are the Vulians. We hunt Dwamak. If you come to Vool Turf, we make Dwamak stew. Not good for you, yes? Hey! Perhaps you know other Dwamaks. Perhaps you want them to be Dwamak stew. This could be arranged. Vulians not above fighting for Dwamaks against other Dwamaks if price is right. <laughs> so, uh, I have been told that there are some very good events you can get We'll do old, uh, we'll do ab, that you can get if you, uh, have a base next to their space. <laughs> so we know, oh, they are very small. They are very small. Interesting. I was expecting them to be a bigger enclave. No, not an easy conquest. They're still... You know what that means, Kiko? What? That cluster behind them? It's all mine. Yep. Nobody can get that. It's all mine. <laughs> Provided I can stop them from claiming these, that is such good news. They don't expand. But I do want to claim this, um, this here, because there's so much energy there. There's so much energy there. Okay, that was good, by the way, because it meant that we gained some resources. Also, I'm actually going to start expanding in this direction to get to here. We do need to do this. So move there, get ready to expand. While unremarkable on the surface, the BK5784 asteroid has a hollow core lined with industrially valuable crystals, like a gigantic geode hung in the stars. Uh, with special instructions preparing as prepared by science officer SJ, any future mining platform should be able to carefully harvest these crystals from the interior of the asteroid. Excellent. Also, I think we do not have any more first contacts. 
Yep, we will send an envoy. Those who defy the will of the mind shall pay the ultimate price. We will improve relations. We do not want to get on these people's bad side right now. Okay, so all of this is ours. All of it. That is good. Faction founded. The Monarchist Initiative. Their members have been pushing hard for an extreme centralization of political and military power. They're also quite happy. Extending our influence to dominate subject nations will please the Monarchist Initiative. Yeah, we're not going to be subjugating anyone just yet. Or at all. Colony formed. Excellent, we have a colony. Right, you guys are going to need another little project. Hi, you guys. Can I commission an art piece? Did you ban robots, by the way? Oh, good point. Robotic workers. Robotic automatons are a threat not only to our people's livelihoods, but to the very fabric of society itself. We must not allow ourselves to be made obsolete. Robotic pops and armies will be automatically disassembled. Done. <laughs> they are outlawed. Also, refugees welcome. No. To open our borders to the dregs of other societies would only serve to undermine the state. We are not allowing any refugees to come to our systems. Besides, they would starve to death because there's no food here. So, no to refugees. There we go. Seems good. not having any refugees. So they are there, the uh, Prosnarkan entity. You could allow citizen only? Nope. Nope. Uh, the beauty of Solaris is making different approaches really viable. Yep. Hey, new tech. Ooh, we have two of that and two of that. You know what? Go with subterranean colonization. We want to clear those blockers. So you've built that there. You're building a mining station. Go back there right now. Accretion complete. We apologize, but we sadly reached something of a creative roadblock. The enclave is in disarray and we have nothing to offer at this time. We thank you for your patronage as always. We hope the situation improves. Plus ten opinion. That's fine. Okay. It's a very weak um, star base right now. Ours isn't much better. But we can build ships here now. Let's as well. System geology Excellent. Uh, we don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, we don't need to worry about that at all. We should start exploring it, though. Start exploring it. See what's there. See what? There's a lot of trade goods there. Oh my, there's a lot of trade goods there. System survey complete. Excellent. Go that way. Accretion complete. Excellent. Um, build a starbase there. We haven't found anyone this way. I'm a little worried we're not expanding this way fast enough either. What's a science project on the border system? Uh, you're gonna have to be more specific than that. That's, uh, that's crack the egg. With the hive mind. Oh, that's the gigantic skeleton. You know, actually, 
do the gigantic skeleton, then survey there. Do that. Anomaly found. Oh! Preliminary scans, heavily armed vessel in orbit with the asteroid. It'd be wise to proceed with caution. Yeah. It would be wise. Hello! Space Amoeba! The entities encountered by a fleet some time ago are now new spaceborne life forms. Quickly nicknamed Space Amoeba, following the gross misreading of initial sensor outputs, the creature is in fact larger than the average Juven Corvette. Communications established with potentially softer life forms. Softer life forms. We could study the Amoeba. Actually, yes, study the amoeba. No pacification option, nope. Construction complete. Excellent. You have Research complete. done that. Hang on. A lot of stuff going on here. You've done that. Um What were you doing there? Go forward. Go forward. Colonize there. Nano mechanics. Ooh, there's some good stuff here. Afterburners are nice. Corvette hull is good. Standardized Corvette patterns, however, will save us resources and save us build speed. Do that. How strong is the Amoeba fleet? Um, 560. We have two and one for eight. We need more ships. <laughs> we need more ships. We can build more ships. The arm, the arm vessel discovered in orbit is an abandoned military spacecraft called Nefri's Pride. Its light frame and evasion hardware suggest it was built for long distance patrol missions, but it has since been retrofitted into a long range stealth bomber. Records of a ship's comm reveals it hijacked by a rebel guerrilla on its way to perform a strike against a secret complex called the Zvan Labs, said to hold a weapon so powerful it could win them the war when it was shot down. We have extracted the ship's destination from its navigational drive. We actually do have need for such a weapon, but if we don't have the weapon, we could get 50 influence. Oh. Mmm. Influence is good to expand, and we do want to expand. But a weapon is good too. Projects are fun, that's true. Situation log updated. Zvan Labs. Where? They are here. Oh, wait, where's the. Where's the Zvan Lab? Hang on. That's a science vessel. Oh, it's there! ages away. Okay. Mm. It's a long way from everyone. Go back. You... You go... Research the project. Can you do it later? Um... Yes, but... I want the weapon now. I want the weapon now, bluntly. So long, Metal Biarco. Glad you had fun. Like, I want the weapon now. As you know, don't claim that. Cancel. Uh, you go there. And then claim this. We really need to start claiming down here, too. Anomaly found. Ooh. Hmm. Research it. Finding tons of anomalies. That is the archaeological site. We're not doing any archaeological sites yet. Kikachi would have liked the weapon last year. That would require time travel. I know! I know. Sucks, doesn't it? You have so many things to scan. You're cracking the. You're checking the uh, skeleton, by the way. 
Building there. Building a star base. Excellent. We have enough influence to build a star base there. Actually, you know what? Build a star base there. We'll have enough influence by the time that's done to build another star base. We'll have enough. This, of course, means I'm not building any ships. Of course. So, we now have 409 power. We're getting there. We... Oh! Researcher upkeep minus 20%. The public has come to regard science as something almost akin to a religion. Their faith in it is absolute. Not as absolute as it is in their divine, um, carnelian. There is no question in this universe so big that it cannot be answered by science. Ascension perk. Ascension perks are special bonuses that our empire can unlock by completing a tradition tree. There are many things that we can pick here. Including that. No. Um, so, we can only pick one of these right now. Uh, and our options are kind of limited. So, Lord of War gives us an extra immersory enclave, diplomatic weight from fleet power, and no. We're not picking Lord of War. There is Nihilistic Acquisition, which basically lets us steal people. No. Interstellar Dominion. Starblaze influence cost and claim influence cost bound by 20%. This is good if you really want to expand super fast. There's also one vision, which is also pretty good. Monthly unity plus 10%. Pop immunity usage minus 10%. Governing attract ethics plus 50%. Consecrated worlds is interesting. The galaxy is home to many holy places, some more obvious than others as mortals. We still struggle to divine the true nature of the universe. Consecrate worlds. Consecrating uninhabited planets increases spiritualist ethics attraction and empire-wide amenities, scaling to the spiritual significance of the worlds consecrated. Intriguing. Mastery of nature gives us two extra districts via a decision. Imperial prerogative just means minus empire size. This is a stat, by the way, that creates sprawl. Executive Vigor is totally redundant because we have divine, the divine thing. Transcendent Learning makes our leaders much better. Shared Destiny gives us more envoys, and if we have subjects we don't lose stuff. There's a reason why I skipped it, Mad Steve, because it's the one we're picking first. Technologies that would have been indistinguishable from magic mere generations ago are now within our reach. A new age of technology has begun. Research speed, flat plus 10% increase. And rare technologies now appear 1.5% of the time instead of 1% of the time. We're picking technological ascendancy. Because we need that faster research time. It's what we need. Anomaly found. Oh, while scanning the asteroid belt, a science team found some sort of irregularity. Go for it. You scan that irregularity. Construction complete. Hi... Alien vessel? What's that? Construction complete. Oh, it's a science vessel! The ghost ship. Um... Cool. What's a what's a ghost ship doing here? Pass. I mean, it's blocked in, so I don't need to worry about it. I suppose. Special project complete. Our continued studies of the massive skeletal remains on Balawar Three have managed to shed some light on how the creature ended up on the planet. There are very faint residual energy readings that indicate some sort of dimensional portal existed briefly towards the rear of the skeleton. Science Officer SJ theorizes that the creature passed through the gateway from another dimension, only to quickly perish in the hostile environment of Balawar 3. Why it did this and where it came from are questions that may never be answered. So, you've finally done that. You can now go over there. 
Got a ton of stuff there. I want to go there and there. You're still surveying. I probably want to beeline towards here, which is a problem. I'm probably going to lose lots of cool stuff here. And what can you do? I'll tell you what we can do. Expand slowly. How are our relations doing with these people? They are getting better. Okay, relations are slowly improving. Attrition complete. Very slowly. We are becoming better friends. This makes me happy. Also, you are fine. You are fine. <laughs> Friends? Yeah, I know. Um, we want here... Hmm. Seven districts. We built three mining districts, and then some... We don't need to do any of that right now. It's growing quite happily. I'm thinking in the future. Oh, also, there is something I do want to build on June, and that is a... Autocathon Monument. One here, too. And you know what? One here too. Unity from jobs. There are no jobs here. Well, I want to put some jobs here. Thanks for the stream. Gotta go. So long. Have fun. I mean, we could start with some mining. Mine out those ores. Plus 73. Not bad. Six years into the game. Shame we can't just mine alloys. Speaking of alloys, there's some alloys. You nearly done. You are not nearly done. Innovation rollout. Oh. Improved reactor boosters. Oh, 13 years, sorry. Survey speed plus 25%. Yes. I mean, blue lasers are right there, but no, we want that. We want that right now. We want that. 30, it's been 13 years already. I feel like I'm so far behind. But I'm not really. I feel like I am. But I'm not. Which way am I expanding here? Like, here's relatively safe now. Do I expand this way to all the cool resources? Or this way to all the cool resources? So many problems. Which way to all the cool resources? Do I go south to all these worlds? The bottom way has planets. Very true. The bottom way has planets. Let's go here, here, here. Down to here. And see what we can do. I mean, there are no planets here, but that is that juicy 14. We found disturbing tangle of technology hidden in a deep crater on the asteroid's surface. Evidently someone has, with rather simple means, managed to stabilize a one-way wormhole, and science officer Sonya quickly asserts that the asteroid is the exit point. The other end opens up somewhere in uncharted space some light years away from the black hole. Small quantities of dark matter are leaking out. Whoever set this up seems to have abandoned it. We found a resource! We have a reason to go south! It's called Dark Matter! The exotic substance has many properties that seemingly defy several natural laws. It could potentially revolutionize the sciences. Yeah, we're going that way now! Special project complete. Right! The Space Amoebas, the name has stuck as the pronunciation of the proper Zeno taxonomic denominator is too unwieldy in the average Junevan are solitary animals when left to their own devices, but all the younger specimens are accompanied by quasi-intelligent flagella, organisms spawned by the amoeba and pro programmed through liquid RNA-laced secretions to do the bidding of the host. These flagella are capable of manipulating and even attacking objects with an impressive yet restricted range around the host, periodically returning to lodge inside the host amoeba's body for reprogramming. There are potentially military applications to be found in magenta properties, or the Fragella's graceful patterns in movement. I'm gonna go 
color with the flagella, the flagella are fascinating. That's 5% evasion. Just flat. That's really good. Like, regenerative hull tissue is fine, but 5% evasion? And that could save our life in battles. That could save our life. Yeah, a flat buff. I mean, this tech is tech is tech. Today in the, that five percent more chance of not land of a hit not landing a ship. Exactly. Today in combat training, we're copying space fish. We are copying space fish. That is what we are doing: copying space fish. Wait, go there. <laughs> the study of pulsars seems to be an endless source of insights for our scientists, but rarely exhibit any signs of dangerous phenomena. This makes the recent reports in Tigria all the more concerning. An initial scan revealed that the pulsar, in addition to its regular electron wave beam, is emitting a separate beam of a limited wavelength which is only visible in the same system at shorter and shorter intervals. According to an calculation, the interval between these pulsars will reach zero at a date of 2300. What occurs then is open to speculation, but the lack of explanations of the pulse has instilled an almost superstitious fear in those who studied it. This is a Tigria? Where, where Tigria? Oh, there! We must be watchful. Okay. Pulsar. Something's gonna happen there. Anomaly found. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be the sign of something else. Ooh, Countdown. That can't be good. Well, it'll be what it'll be. If we die horribly, we die horribly. If we don't, we don't. We'll deal with it. Or not, and we'll just die. At least we've managed to not cause problems here. Special project complete. Ooh, our scientists have returned from Bazvan Labs unscathed with footage collected from the facility's Mayhem. security cameras. Hey, Silence Pote, 28 months. Thank you so very much. That's so kind of you. Love seeing some Stellaris, sir. Well, we're not far in, but uh, things are getting spicy. It shows lab scientists bound and gagged as guerrilla soldiers pry open the weapon strong box. But to their dismay, the box is empty. Only minutes later, the rebels can be seen writhing on the floor in intense agony, dark patches swelling across their bodies, then their skin rips and a grey, unidentifiable matter spills out. The matter continues to expand, swirling hypnotically around them until one of the scientists activates the emergency system, sprinkler starts the room in liquid, and electrical surge passes through it, executing all living things. Here the footage ends. Our crew can confirm that the strong box was indeed empty. Spooky! Super solid materials! <laughs> Bunkerbot! We have traced the unusual electromagnetic radiation emanating from Tigria 1 to a secret subterranean bunker hiding a mega computer the size of a battleship. Our researchers suspect it may have been there for several thousand years, the nature of which still eludes us. When the crew attempted to interact with the computer, they discovered that the facility, which had appeared both abandoned and unguarded, was in fact opened, operated by a security AI, the highest purpose of which seems to be lying, trying its visitors, uh, trying its visitors alive. As the crew defeated the AI, they broadcasted a message to an unknown recipient. Scrap it for a bunch of material, boost 10 years monthly research, or 1,811 unity, or 19 unity. You know what? Parts are parts, that's not a lot of parts. 10 years of research growth is fine. But 1,819 unity. Gaining 50 a month. 
So in, tw in a year, we gained 600. That's three years of unity right there. Three years of unity. <laughs> That'll get us nearly towards our next tradition. But 10% on engineering is only five. Yeah, but it's only five. Huh. By the way, while I'm thinking about it, uh, get a research lab here. Also, a few more of these. Immediately. Do I go for reducing my empire size from systems and colonies? Do I go for galactic ambition? Starbase upkeep? Do I go for colonies? Which then leads to population growth. There's lots of things I could colonize it. That's in the hundred world I could colonize. Not big though. Also, do I want to colonize that even though it's only size 12? Hack. Do I want to colonize in a hundred percent size 12 world? What do you think, Kev? It's nice. There's not much on there. It's not great, though. I oh, don't know, honestly. I could just turn it into a place that spews out. Ah! Minerals from jobs plus 5%. <laughs> Five percent extra minerals from jobs. Also, moat harvesting and maximum alien zoo. I think we colonize this world. I think we colonize this world. It's small. But we want that mining colony. Adrift. We discovered an alien ship among the asteroids surrounding it. If not responding to our hails, whether this is due to it being unable to interpret our signals, or perhaps some other reason, we do not know. Science Officer Bindle recommends a construction ship be dispatched to tow this stricken vessel out of the debris field. If left untouched, there is the risk the alien ship may be crushed by the asteroids. That's a thousand minerals. That's a thousand minerals. <laughs> or we can get the ship. Ooh. Where is Bindle? Intriguing. Situation log updated. We have a timed mission. Where? Here. Oh wow, it's literally there. I mean, research it. I wonder what star keep, star base upkeep. Reduce that. That's good. Construction complete. Marvelous. Claim that energy. 
calling all Bindle. You're needed in space. He is needed in space. System geology charted. Also, we briefly touched the news activities emanating from the moon. <laughs> I'm colonizing this world, by the way. I'm absolutely colonizing this world. <laughs> It's gonna be called Ruby. <laughs> Get it? Cause it's a Ruby. Ha! Love it. Colonizing it. You're gonna have to get used to these puns. But I'll tell you what, folks. It's a funny joke. Tell you what, folks. We're gonna dig up this thing. And then we'll stop. Oh, you fully excavated that, haven't you? Um, or surveyed that. Go to here. Special project complete. Once the ship had drifting by there was towed out with debris, we were able to send in an away team to investigate. They uncovered a murder scene. Only one crew member has been found, a long-eared amphibian biped who appears to have been stabbed repeatedly. While its crew is evidently dead, the ship is now up for grabs. It is fitted with very efficient thrusters, the structure and design of which are beyond us at present. The vessel is not armed, seemingly having been used as transport for important personnel. Repurposing it to an exploration vessel would be a minor undertaking. However, if we deconstruct it and study the engines in greater detail, we might instead be able to apply its ingenious designs to our own fleets. Okay, science vessel. Don't worry, I'll sort it. Or 10% sublight speed forever. <laughs> 10% sublight speed forever, thank you. Also, it's this ship. It, um, it's just finished doing a thing. Uh, we're going to send this ship over to... Here, I suppose. <laughs> You're still studying that. Arg. You're studying that. Have you finished studying that? Everything's gonna be fine with that. And the pulsar and these people here that are still kind of a little mad. Got these people here that we're just studying. It'll be fine. Also, we could totally study them differently if we wanted to. If we wanted to. Their armies, by the way, not very impressive. Not very impressive. But as I said, we're going to be stopping here for now because... It's nearly time to stop. Our empire is very wibbly and odd. If I want to scroll the outlier down, you might have an idle research ship. Uh, I do not. I have no idle ships whatsoever. Not anymore. So, we've explored up here. That's fine. And we want to explore down to here. And also explore around to here. Lots of places we need to go. That'll be for next time. For we are the Junefen Formation, and we have gone through 14 years. Not a lot of time. Seems a perfect spawn. Yeah, apart from that and that. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Thanks to the stream, Kiko. No problem. No problem. Glad to help. Give me one moment. Just need to uh, set this up here. Yeah, if you were expecting war, like, within the first 14 years of the game, you clearly don't know me, because, uh, we're too busy claiming everything first. Once we've claimed everything that we physically and reasonably can, then we can look at doing something else. <laughs> then we can look at doing something else. Like, right now, we're in a peaceful part, just exploring. Also, we have 505, uh fleet strength. We need more stuff. We need to build more, like, 
artisans to do things and, you know, make more alloys. We'll be doing that eventually, but not right now. For right now, we have done a good thing. We've done a decent thing and um, it's a good start. It's shaky, but we'll see how things go. No aliens down here yet is very interesting. We could claim a big empire if we're lucky. But either way, a couple of things I need to quickly mention to you before we conclude, like the uh, website that is mine, kakalskia.com. You can go there and find links to form both of my writing projects, both the Trendy of Dusseldorm and, nope, I know it does. But we're going to be expanding as much as we can, Mr. Dark. I'll deal with the sprawl later. I'd rather have a big empire than a small one. Now, there's also uh, links there for where you can buy my novel, Errant Hope. There's also my Discord, where you can join a large, thriving community that I'm often a part of. Who am I raiding? Uh, Old Dragon, because someone guided the raid. Um, there's tons of places there to talk about my Let's Plays and streams, past and present. Tons of... Uh, Emotes based on my Let's Plays and Streams past and present. And it's just a large time community that I'm often there to do stuff. I also play Stellaris there at times. Um, there's also my Patreon, where you can pledge to support me in doing what you own. <laughs> at some point, the more you own, the less you have to defend. <laughs> well, we'll see how things go. I mean, for all I know, people could be infringing in this area and all sorts of stuff anyway. There's also my Patreon. You can pledge to support me in doing what I do there. There is a... Uh, Nothing Let's Play or Streamwise hidden behind paywalls, but there's a lot of other stuff that goes behind the scenes that you typically don't see that makes this my full-time job. And I appreciate all the people who help to make what I do possible, because seriously, they do by by supporting me there. Those who do pledge to me not only get a different colored name on Discord to show what they do, my deep and sincere thanks, they also get the ability to vote on upcoming playthroughs when the opportunity arises, like Quest for Glory, which became a thing thanks to voting. There's also my YouTube, where you can check out all my content, from the very first video I put up over 14 years ago to the most recent video today, and everything in between. Over 10,000 videos, 300 playlists, and all my Twitch VODs are there. This one will be there in two days, in its own little playlist. There's also the fact that if we get to 100,000 YouTube subscribers, I will do a replay of Terror from the Deep and a replay stream of Wizards of Mori's 2 Iron Sword. And if we get to 550 Twitch sub points, we're at 264 right now, uh, we will get, um, we'll, I'll do a playthrough of Super Mario World on stream, a game I have never played before. <laughs> never played it before. Also, apparently there is uh, an announcement there that has not come through, and that is that uh, Hydrati there just subscribed. 22 months. It's, it's just not come through on the uh, thingy-madoodler. That's strange, but it's there. Thank you very much. There's also my Twitter. Thanks for the stream. Looks like the first few steps between the stars was... Uh, I mean, we're not dead yet. Um, there's also my Twitter, where you can follow me to get notifications about when I start streaming, when my Let's Play videos go live, and all kinds of other random things, including... Animal Crossing tweets from time to time, little Stellaris updates on little playthroughs I'm doing, uh, me poking fun at terrible marketing emails, and all kinds of other stuff. It's all there, it's all fun. And finally, I just need to thank all of you because you're all absolutely fantastic and you make all that I do possible. You seriously do. You're all absolutely fantastic and I'm just so humbled by how amazing you all are. <laughs> See you on Wednesday? You will! You will, Dark Jade. Um, like, really, I, I can never could have dreamed when I started doing this that you'd all love what I do, and I intend to keep doing this for as long as I possibly can. So seriously, thank you all so, so very much. Thank you. And whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Yes, you are! You'll have to watch the VOD indeed. I'm sorry. I hope you have a fantastic day, and you succeed in everything you set out to do. The next stream is tomorrow, 2 p.m. BST, Animal Crossing New Horizons. We'll be inviting a new villager to the island. Last one for a little while because we don't have the other two photos. But hopefully, hopefully, we'll also work on a garden. It'll all be super, super fun. So I'll catch you next time, folks. And I'll see you then. How much influence to invite a villager? Uh, good luck with that. And remember, be nice to each other, everyone. For if everyone is nice to each other, the world would be that much better a place. And we all want that, don't we? I certainly do. And I hope you do too. Later. And remember, there's no talk to Jitters here. There's only talking to Gavrock. The 
divine ruler of the Junvan Formation. Will they conquer the stars? Or will they get wiped out by a fanatical purifier? Probably the latter. But we'll see, won't we? We'll see. Later.